Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and this is Kixel Bridge 2020. I'm also going to take a look at Kixel Mixer 2020. So this is really just sort of a first look video, a little bit of a walkthrough, sort of a stream of consciousness, not a tutorial, so to speak. But I'm just going to go through these two programs and, and click around and show you what they can do or what I think they could do. Um, I'm going to try to make a scene and render it out in Moto. I'm going to make some materials in Mixer and download them from Bridge and uh, uh, dress up one of their 3D asset scans as well and probably prep um, a custom 3D asset in Moto and show you some of the things you need to do there and bring it into Mixer and detail it up and bring it back into Moto and ultimately do a render, probably an Octane, of our scene. So that's a lot and I'm going to bump into probably bugs. I'm going to bump into areas where I may not know what I'm doing. I'm going to um, find some areas where I think it should be doing something that I think it feel it should be doing but maybe it can't do that quite yet because you still are in beta. And uh, yeah, but if you're interested in just sort of sitting back for probably a little bit of a longer video and checking out these two programs, uh, maybe worth your while. Tear yourself away from the news for a little bit because these two programs are actually pretty impressive, I must say. Like, Kixel's done an amazing job accumulating this, uh, accumulating this really large library of both 3D surface scans as well as 3D objects. The 3D, 3D object scans of uh, library has gotten really huge lately as well. So let's just click around and bridge real quick and then we'll jump over to Mixer and uh, make something, or at least try to. So let's just start here in the main, you know, home area of Kixel Bridge. And so if you click the little home icon over here, Often you'll get uh, sort of some collections being promoted by Kixel and uh, oftentimes some new assets. So you'll see some new snow and bricks here, some new 3D objects. They've got some new plants that came up recently and some collections where they collect some, some of these 3D assets and materials together in collections for biomes or uh, things like uh, you know mansions or uh, barns or whatever. They have all kinds of different categories. And they just have thousands and thousands of assets. And so you can see that there's tons of new stuff. All this stuff is new, new, new. They have new stuff all the time, probably every day. And, um, you know, the trick is being able to drill down and find what you want. And there's a lot of tools for doing that. Uh, but before we get into that, we'll just take a look at some of these other icons here. You've got your little human icon here, which takes you to your um, accounts. You can get to your account settings. You can uh, see how many points you have here. This is sort of a point system for downloading each of these assets, whether it's a 3D asset or some images or a brush. I'll have a, a point cost to them. Unless I believe you're using the Unreal version, which again, like I think is is, is, is free or free-ish, but I'm not. I'm just using the paid version, so I'm subscribed to. But anyway, that's a, that's a there's your points there. Uh, you have notifications here as well, so they'll have like some new updates or, or whatever there. And you have a big download button here. If you select an asset, you can always click the download button. In terms of searching, you can drill into searching a couple of different ways. One, you can just look at the, the, the types of assets they have, and you can see this list right here. 3D assets, 3D plants, mirrors what you have over here. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, oh, sizes is interesting because they do actually have a really uh, diligent way of keeping the scale uh, correct between all of their scanned 3D assets and their materials. So their materials are typically scanned at like a two by two meter um, rate. And we'll take a look at that later. And uh, the 3D assets will have a, a scale in there as well. So you can very easily match the correct material scale to the asset scale. You can also search 3D assets by scale. So if you want to look at really big stuff, like greater than eight meters, I'll probably get some trees or some other stuff in here, some big rock formations. Or I can, you know, look at something really small, like something between uh, less than a quarter meter. I'll probably get some, you know, plants and some pebbles and, you know, some stuff like that. Maybe some, yeah, pottery, some food. So pretty cool. They could You could search by size. You can also search um, by states. So old, new, damaged. And so I want to look at some damaged stuff. I want to look at some uh, small damage stuff, you know, that's where I can sort of, you know, drill down with these criteria. I can even do it by color, some small damaged orange stuff, right? So I've got some small damaged cans there. Uh, also by environment, small damaged orange stuff in the desert, you know, well, nothing, <laughs> nothing to match that, but maybe I can just do, um, 
all sizes and now we've got some bigger desert stuff in there as well so and maybe uh, all states now we've got all kinds of stuff in the desert so you can see you could you could search that way and you can clear it out pretty easily which is really cool uh, let's take a look at the actual types of 3D assets, though, that uh, Kixel is offering. This really has changed a lot in the last couple of years because I started using this a couple of years ago on some big projects. And it was mostly just materials, maps, right? Grabbing maps from, from Kixel and some scanned atlas maps and some leaves and things like that. It had a few 3D objects, some rocks, some sticks, uh, but not a ton of stuff. But now it just has a ton of 3D assets. And if you click 3D assets, you'll see uh, all these categories over here, modular, mushrooms, rocks, roofing, whatever. Uh, you can see them over here as well. Um, you know, tons of different bricks and you can just sort of, you know, scroll up and down. Uh, I can look at rubble and you have subcategories. You can look at edible. I can look at fruit. And when I actually click on something, let's say this apple here, I'll get this cool preview uh, popping out on the right hand side. And so uh, one, I've got some more icons up here. This is just my uh, preview preview. It's just a rendered image of it. Sometimes there's multiple rendered images and there'll be little dots here to kind of click through. And I can take a look at the maps that make up the apples. So there's the albedo and uh, normal and uh, different kinds of normals actually, uh, roughness, uh, thickness. So not all objects come with all these maps, right? Some come with more, some come with less. Like this has a curvature map. They really kind of went all out on this apple here. <laughs> thickness map, uh, roughness map, you may find all you actually use is roughness and normal and albedo or maybe displacement. It really depends on what you want. And you can, you know, kind of pick and choose what you want to download as well. Uh, you can also look at this in full 3D. So I can click 3D here and click around. I can even you know, expand the screen to get a big view of it. And it's, it's pretty nice. I can rotate it. I don't think I could zoom in. At least I haven't figured out the right key combination to zoom in. I can, I can pan and I can change the lights by shift right click. But man, I have not figured out how to zoom. I don't think you can actually zoom on this view, but uh, shift right click with the lights is sometimes, uh, sometimes a nice way to view the roughness map and the normal map to see it uh, play over the surface like that. Um, anyway, so that's 3D assets. What else do we have? We also have, uh, it, they've actually, let me just go back home here. They've actually uh, broken out plants into its own category, but they're also 3D assets, obviously. What's interesting about this, though, is, you know, we've got these things like these cacti over here, which are, uh, you know, these, you know, full 3D objects like that. We can also have things like, um, go to the aquatic ones here, which, uh, or maybe, um, let's take a look at uh, some weeds. Maybe that's a better one to look at. So we've got some weeds. These are all 3D, actually. None of these, I think, are our postcard. They're all 3D. You can kind of tell these are a little bit postcardy there. If I maybe go full, you can see they're sort of maybe mapped to a plane, right? But you know, it's still it's 3D. Um, and like I said, you can really you know I could bring up my let's like a look at uh, I don't know maybe a fern like these guys here. Twirl them around. You can see we've got multiple meshes in this particular asset so there there's a little drop down here i could look at them like this and of course i can look at uh, just the albedo on this particular asset or just the metallic spec on this asset so this is for the different uh, shading modes right a metallic pbr or a specular shading mode instead of a, a metallic channel you'd have a specular channel for a non-metallic surface that's that would, you know be something like a uh, like a fern a non-metallic fern <laughs> so Anyway, so um, yeah, so 3D assets, including 3D plants, there's just a ton of them. But then we also have um, surfaces. Now, surfaces is what you would think uh, Kixel mostly has, and it's similar to like what you know something like Substance Painter has a lot of. And these are just packages of different maps that will create a surface. So let's take a look at uh, something like Bark and maybe a Pine Bark, and let's pick one of these guys. And again, we've got a couple of views here. We've got just this. 3D view, we can twirl around and we can go like again, full screen to get a better look at this. We can look at it um, in PBR, or just the albedo or whatever. We can also look at just uh, just the maps. So here's the maps here. You can look at those before you download. And again, these come with different maps like this particular, the bark with, comes with albedo, AO, displacement, normal and roughness. That's it, right? No curvature. It doesn't, you know, depending on the asset, it may not come with, um, you know, every single map you may want. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's take a look at the preview here. Again, you can, you know, sort of 
click through different previews. There's a tile preview, there's a clay render preview, and there's the uh, fully render preview. And so that's services, right? And there's just a ton, a ton of services. You've got rocks, you've got subcategories here, you got your granites, you've got metal services, you've got bare metal, um, all kinds of stuff. Let's get, uh, let's see, maybe a brush steel here. Let's take a look at PBR and you can see the uh, surface imperfections there. So pretty cool, right? Tons of different services. And after services, we have decals. Now decals are something that are super useful. In fact, the Substance Painter 2020 that was just uh, released, I think yesterday, has a lot of emphasis on decals. There's a ton of decals in Kixel Bridge and um, Mixer really does a nice job of add, letting you add decals to 3D models or uh, materials that you're putting together. I mean, they really, it really has some nice tools for that, which I'll get into. So the, with the decals, one thing that they're all gonna have in common, let's look at some concrete uh, scans here. You know, some damaged concrete that's all good. Um, so you've got, again, you've got some rendered images here to help you out. There's some rebar there. And you take a look at the maps. And one thing they're all going to have in common is an opacity map, right? So that's what allows you to overlay your decal onto your 3D models, materials, or your, your material you're creating. Is that opacity map that will be applied as a stencil in Moto uh, or, you know, an opacity channel on something like Octane or V-Ray. Um, and again, like... You know, the number of maps that it comes with is, is really dependent on the type of decal it is or whatever they happen to include. Like if you remember the Apple had all kinds of stuff with it. This is Albedo, AO, Displacement, Normal, Opacity, of course, and Roughness. And that's probably par for the course for a lot of these in terms of the different types of maps you're going to have. Uh, but there's just a ton of different decals, right? So here's some uh, bloodstained decals, all kinds of stuff. Um, these actually, these tree decals here are interesting because... You can add, you know, this is the type of thing you would really add to a material versus a 3D object. So I may be making a uh, ground material and I want to add some pine needles or some leaves to the ground. And I'm, I'm more likely to grab a little thing like this, like bark pieces, and, and apply that to something like a ground surface, you know, like a rock surface or a gravel surface and get bark pieces on on the ground and mixer rather than applying them to the side of a 3D model like I would with a different kind of decal, like a, um, let me just go back to decals here, like obviously some of, uh, you know, like some of, the, some of these other decals here, like these commercial ones here, like some tape or something like that. That's something I'm going to put on a 3D model probably. So lots of different uses for decals, and we'll use that in the uh, mixer project I'm going to be using. Atlases are, again, another type of map. So you have materials, you have decals, you have atlases, and atlases... Um, if you take a look at an atlas here, so let's take a look at this kind of debris and let's take a look at uh, this, these leaves here. Let's see if I can go over here. So these are some leaves, right? Now this is different than the decal I was looking at, this atlas. And this atlas is laid out sort of a grid pattern. You wouldn't want to overlay this onto um, a material you're making or a surface you're making because of this sort of grid-like pattern. It's just not very natural, right? What you would do with these is create, um, uh, basically prep them to be used with replicators. And so if I look at, again, there's a ton of different leaves and things like that. So if I go to atlases and go to uh, plant, you'll see a bunch of stuff. So things like this, you know, you know these little clover here or uh, this grass, these are really meant to be applied sort of sort of cut up and put on replicators. And I'm gonna show a workflow for that where you can put these on a polygon plane, like a UV mapped plane and just sort of slice around them and then center them all and put the pivot where it's supposed to be, or rather align them to the center of the world um, where you would like the pivot to be on each of these leaves and then use them with a replicator. You know, that's really what these atlases are for. And there's all kinds of different atlases, right? Mosses. And, and all, you know, if you look at this thing, I mean, there's just a ton of like little things here. You can imagine each one of these on its own polygon. Now, there's no way to do this automatically, unfortunately. You're going to have to like um, use Moto's uh, modeling tools to create little like one polygon pieces of all the all this moss here. Uh, but it's actually pretty, pretty easy. And it's something I did a lot of in a couple of different projects I've done. So there's atlases, and we are not done yet. Next on the list is imperfections. So imperfections are super useful. Now, again, these are just images, and typically they'll just be like one image map. You know, here we've got um, a mask and a roughness, and oftentimes you'll just get like a roughness mat. 
But here we've got uh, just a roughness mat. And this is you know a bunch of fingerprints here or a bunch of stains. And I'm going to go to a 3D model here so you kind of look at it with light. You can imagine all the different uses you can use these for. Obviously for roughness mats, putting on metal or putting on wood or putting on whatever just to sort of grunge it up. Uh, but they're really high res scans and we've got leaks. We've got just a ton of different rough uh, uh, imperfection maps. Um, grunge and stuff for rubber and stuff for me metal and white marks and uh, all, all kinds of stuff. And they're really, really super, super useful. And you don't have to use it just on the roughness channel. You can use it on whatever channels you want. You can put it on bump if you want to. If you're still using bump maps in Moto, you can put it on displacement. You can uh, use it for specular. You can use it to mask between different uh, colors. They're just super useful. Um, so almost done. We are down to displacements. Displacements, interestingly enough, are really, for the most part, geometric displacement maps. So you've got different sort of geometric shapes here. You can look at some of these like this and probably look at them in 3D like so. And uh, yeah, I have not seen a bunch of really useful stuff like in terms of rocks and um, we've got a couple of things, some sand ripples, but there's not much in displacement maps in terms of you know, sort of uh, most of it's geometric in terms of like sort of organic stuff which is fine because you can always go to any material any surface you want and you know if i like this grass here i can go to this forest grass and i could just you know download uh the displacement map from here if i want to so it, I, I understand it's a little bit redundant but it does have a whole separate surface uh or a whole separate category for displacements and lastly, we have brushes. And these, um, again, going back to Kixel Mixer that now has some painting tools. And keep in mind, this isn't like the sophistication of Substance Painter. Um, but it does have brushes, and you can use these directly in uh, Kixel Mixer. And you can also use these as, as masks and, and other things in uh, your 3D program itself. So we can do something like go to a stain, right? So you don't need to use this in a painting program. You can, of course, just download this black and white image and use it as a stencil map or something like that, um, uh, or a group mask in Moto to mask between different materials to get some different kinds of stains and things like that, or splatters, or uh, print, or, you know, we got handprints and fingerprints and footprints and all kinds of stuff. So again, a bunch of useful stuff. These are actually usually just one point for downloading, so pretty cheap. And uh, you just grab them on the fly and use them. You can also grab these and use them as, as paintbrushes within Mixer. So that's the home. And it's kind of a, you know, that's pretty much all I'm going to show here. Yeah, the rest of the categories here, you've got collections. So I think you can um, go to different collections, like go to the Nordic Forest. And I believe you can sort of download these as a bundle. But it really kind of shows you. I know the Kixel... Uh, employees will go to like a location, they'll go to Iceland, or they'll go to a Nordic forest. <laughs> Are these guys Swedish or something? Do they all live in Nordic forests? Um, and they'll like, anyway, they'll make these collections like, uh, so quarry and, and stumps. I'm sure that wasteland is a good one, <laughs> some good stuff there. All kinds of stuff, right? Um, so yeah, environments, we've got, uh, there's always a bunch of free stuff available. So whether you have an account or not, you should be able to get a hold of these. Uh, 3D assets, imperfections, everything. These are all sort of free. I usually grab them. Uh, we've got you know your purchase stuff here, and also your local library. So this is the stuff that's been downloaded, and you know you can set a directory uh, for your Mega Scan assets, your Kixel assets, and so I'll put that on a project server so all my computers are um, able to get to it. And so yeah, and, and again you've got all your categories here that you have you know, with decals and services. And, you know, these are the things that I've downloaded and have available locally. So that about covers it. What is this mixer? Oh, that's like a, a mix that I, I guess your mixer mixes are available on Bridge as well. That's interesting. So this is a mix I made, and we'll show that pretty soon. But, um, yeah, so there we go. That's uh, Kixel Bridge 2020. Didn't think I'd talk about this for 20 minutes, but hopefully you're just on your couch drinking a beer and chilling. So I think I'll just do a second video for Mixer, obviously, because this one went on for a while. And uh, yeah, that was Bridge. Yum, yum.